if we only teach students the curriculum, we have failed them. It's something I've said in the innovator's mindset, and it's something I think about quite a bit. There's a lot of things that we teach in education that we, as the adults, are very passionate about. I think about some of the things I'm really excited about that my kids aren't as excited about. And when I think about these things, I don't necessarily want my kids to love the same things I do. I love basketball. I talk about it all the time. And I noticed that my daughters so far aren't as interested. When we go to a game, they're more interested in the dancing and the mascot than they ever are in the basketball game. But the skills that I learned from playing team sports, the ability to lead, the ability to communicate with others, those are things that should transcend. Those are things that are more important than the sport and can help my kids in so many different spaces in their lives moving forward. So that's why I was really interested in this conversation today with Brian Heisey, because we talked about his love and passion for science, but also that his focus wasn't that every kid walked out being really passionate and excited about science, but the skills that they took from his class, from that experience, could apply to so many facets of their life. And so when he talks about this idea of customized learning and really knowing who our students are, moving backwards from them and helping them see the things that they learn in a classroom, going beyond the classroom, I thought it was really compelling. I know you're going to love this podcast. So welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Today, I am joined by Brian Heisey. Brian is a middle school teacher, teaches middle school science. And I will tell you straight up, Brian, that was my worst subject in school. Oh, it is my worst subject. Why? Why? It's, a, it's the best. It's the best. Le okay. Is you got you okay. to lay it on is the plate yet. Is it the best? It's, it's, I don't know about that. It's, Isn't it's, it very important? Absolutely. It's the that's, best. Why I, that's why I defer it to other people, right? Uh, so. Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe this will, maybe we should do a podcast of like teach George science and then, yeah, that'd be great. We can you, blow stuff up. If you, if you could pull it off, then everyone would, would follow kind of what you, what you do. So as I say, Brian is a middle school teacher, teaches science. Uh, he is known for his, uh, raps that he has actually, he has a, a rap. I actually, he told me and I looked it up before looked we it up, yeah. up. and he's like, he's rapping. Act it's cool. like, it's not just you. It was with, with like, I saw little kids in there too. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the one, the one we made a music video, uh, was called DNA, uh, just replicate. Yeah. Um, and it was a music video created with a bunch of students at that time. Um, I put my own kids in there we went around to different places in York and kind of filmed it. So it was kind of fun to do a uh, local newspaper and a uh, TV that. station. Yeah. TV station got me for a little quick interview. So kind of fun just to highlight some of the things you do. Um, well, it, like, do you think like, and so obviously it was about DNA, like yeah. is that, so yeah, like, yeah. do you think these kids will ever forget that now? No, like, no. And, and that's a great thing. Like when you, ever you involve any sort of like music or rap or, hmm. you know, any, anything like that to help kids learn, it sticks. And now, the thing that you have to be prepared for is you have to be prepared for them to just start saying it all the time in your room everywhere, like to a point where like you can't stand it anymore. But in the long run, they do remember. So it's good. Okay. So this actually, I don't know. We're probably based on how long you've been teaching. We're probably close to the same age. Did okay. you ever watch Cheers? Did you watch? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So, okay. So you actually, you just, you proved something that is true there is a when coach do you remember coach like he yeah. was on for a while and then he pa he actually tragically passed away um yeah. you know in the middle woody harrelson was like kind of like transition and became mm -hmm. the new bar center but i think it was like uh coach or you know sam were in were actually um learn was going to school and they were learning about countries and they're like but, yeah albania albania I do remember that. yeah like it was actually i re still remember the yeah. song which yeah. is kind of like i don't know anything else about albania other than that song so it's kind of and uh you, and you remember it yeah so yeah, yeah that's actually there you go so you can use the cheers analogy uh yeah. whatever so example done Right. So tell, tell us like how, like how you actually, and, and by the way, I don't want anyone who's watching this thinking 
I don't think science is important. It's not a great subject. I just personally struggle with it as a teacher or as okay. a student, right? And sometimes, so, you know, mentioning yeah. and just being honest about your struggles is 100%. a good thing. You know, it's a great. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And I, yeah, like I still, I still, I still have a tough yeah. time with it. I don't, I don't understand, but I, I, and I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's just my mind doesn't go that way. But uh, how did you like tell us about your experience teaching? Like, how did you, you know, end up teaching science? I know we, you talked yeah. about some inspiration that you had. Yeah. Uh, from your teachers, but you know, uh, you started about 19 years ago. So tell us a little bit about your career and how you're doing what you're doing today. Right, right. So, um, you know, throughout high school, I loved science. Um, you know, I had a great teacher, talked about him before, Chris Yurick. Uh, he was my uh, high school biology teacher and then biochem teacher. I just love science. And I also at the time, I was heavily involved in music. I'm a drummer. Um, so actually, when I went to college, I had a double major. I was a uh, biology education major and a music education major. And I quickly found out um, right away in my first semester and second semester in college, those two things do not play well together because between all the lab time and all the practice time, not happening. So I made the music part a hobby and I continued with science. Um, and that's where I'm at. Uh, I've been teaching, like uh, George said, for 19 years and I haven't turned back. I, I love it. Um, love it. Okay. So I, I'm like, I'm curious about this. And, yeah. uh, if you like you, you love science, science, do, is there something like when people love science, is there something innate in it? Is it something like in hate and end up loving? Like, like how do you, when you have a student who comes into the classroom, who's maybe not excited about it? Yeah. Yeah. Like how do you switch that? Well, so you switch it with a couple different things. So yeah. I, I love to teach, um, with demos. Um, because I think demos can easily get kids uh, interested in science. So quick example, beginning of the year, um, we talk about observations um, and I do a, a really cool little demo where they take, I take methane gas and I blow it up within bubbles and then light the bubbles on fire. It's actually mm -hmm. at the end of my uh, DNA wrap if you want to see it. <laughs> right. um, but anyway, we do that. Uh, I don't know if you see this side, these Barbies hanging up here behind me. I can't get yep. my finger pointed the right way. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's, that's embarrassing. So anyway, um, we, we talk about lab safety and, uh, you know, could be controversial a little bit, but their hair catches on fire because they don't tie the, their hair back. So they, the kids love that. <laughs> um, and, um, over the years, I also, I, I know this doesn't necessarily apply to the classroom. Um, I take my little science show on the road and I visit like different class, uh, campgrounds and different events. Oh. And I do a whole bunch of little demos, um, just to try and get kids and families interested in STEM and science. Yeah. Um, so to answer your original question, I would say demos really are helpful, but also it's, it's, it's personality too. I mean, Right. You can you can roll in a classroom and be one of the best. No, no, most everything there is to do about science. But then your presentation comes across bland um, mm -hmm. or you could like know a bunch um, and, you know, exude that love and people follow along. I'm not saying it has to become the best subject and right. your most favorite subject. But my goal is really easy for the kids. I just I, I ask them to at the beginning of every year to really think about like one area of science that we talked about this year that they love or that they like. Um, mm -hmm. And that I try to also tell them, I'm going to try and just show you the world of science. Um, and then at the end of the year, we kind of reflect on that. And it's kind of cool because in seventh grade, yeah. we talk about life. And then in eighth grade, we talk about like the physical side with chemistry and physics. So kind of get both aspects there. Well, you make, you make a really valid point. And I, 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 I like I really respected my teachers, appreciated them. The 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 part where I struggled is that I had some s science teachers that were really brilliant at science, but not necessarily brilliant at teaching science. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I hear you. Yeah. That, that that to me was like uh, that's where I struggled sometimes. Is I felt sometimes they didn't understand why I didn't understand. And because it, it almost seemed second nature to them or they were so well versed in it. And, and we talked about this, you know, before the podcast, I think you made a really valid point. I'd love for you to kind of dig into this. Yeah. We, we talked about, you know, I, I, I honestly, as, as much as I appreciate you, Brian, and know you'd be like a super fun science teacher, I guarantee that not every kid is like jacked up about science yeah. when they leave. But I think you talked about that. You really want them to be great at 
like learning and life and things like that too. And if you can do that, there's, there's, a, and, and I yeah. think, I think it's like, I think that for me, what is, was a really important point you made before we even got on the podcast, because I, I have an appreciation for science knowing I still struggle with it, but there are so many things that there is other science teachers I had who really got me excited about learning yeah. outside of science, if that makes sense. And so like, yeah, no, I, I totally get that philosophy. Yeah. yeah sure. So, I mean, I, I really think that the the main the main goal, at least that I try and do in my classroom, and and I, I guarantee you most teachers feel the same way, is like you want to make sure that those students that you see, whether it's a year or whether you're lucky enough to like loop, I get to loop with some of my kids each year. Um, yeah. The, the main goal in the back of my head is, you know, even if you don't like my subject, I want to teach you to, to arm yourself with those that toolkit of, of strategies, of, of different things that when you leave my room, you will be able to apply, whether it's in other classrooms or like thinking long term, like your career. So, I, I you know, when we talk about kids, you want to make them a whole package to package out to send out into the world, whether that's like thinking about empathy, whether that's thinking about like those hard and soft skills, like when you're talking about interviews, presentations, anything that you can do mm -hmm. to just help them excel and exceed in life. Um, and and I, I told, you know, George, before we got on here, I said, you know, quite honestly, my, my curriculum in the grand scheme of things, I, I don't really think matters. Like, because they're going to have science again. Right. And when they get to college, they probably will have some sort of science again. My, my main goal is to make sure that I hit on everything they have to offer as a person so that when they leave, they know they're more confident with what they have to offer and can give in life, really. Well, you know, it, it's funny because they're like, you know, maybe not every kid will be good at science, but I'm sure they'll see the value of like, for example, the scientific method, right? Yeah. yeah. Like questioning things like that too. And I remember I, I got into uh, kind of a heated debate one time uh, when I was presenting with an English teacher. Cause I said, I don't really love novels. I don't like reading mm -hmm. novels. It's never been my thing. Oh my God. Like you shouldn't be around kids. Like, how dare you say that? I'm like, well, did you play sports? And they're like, no, I said, well, sports is one of the most valuable things to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it taught me a lot about leadership, taught me a lot about how to work with other people, connecting mm -hmm. those things. So I don't look down upon you because you don't see the value in sports. Now, there's elements that I learned from sports, like uh, my own daughter, Clea, is my oldest daughter. Uh, I want her to love basketball. She's, it's not happening. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's, not, yeah. it's not seeming to, to and that's okay. Yeah as long as she sees the important elements of it, but also she sees how important it is to be passionate about something. And mm -hmm. I think that, that to me, right. And I think mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the subject mm -hmm. that, that as opposed to the, the skills and, you know, the qualities that you develop, you know, through that love and that passion that can, you know, obviously go into other spaces. Yeah. I think that, yeah. that's and I, I mean, I totally, I totally agree with you. Like in my family, we're big, like I told you when I went to college, I was a double major with science and music. I'm a big musician. Like I, right. I take a lot of time to practice both piano and drums and my kids are both into music music as well. And, you know, over time they see the value of that practice, you know, they see the value just like, I mean, that goes hand in hand with sports. I mean, and so like, and working with other people in different, you know, ensembles and things. So, I mean, it's kind of hard sometimes for a kid, um, to to visualize and to see oh this like in the moment this is important right. but that's the kind of stuff we need to teach them like this is important because because right. you always have those kids like what why do i have to learn about genetics i'm never gonna use it well okay <laughs> but let's talk about the process behind this right. you're gonna have kids one day right okay maybe so let's talk about what that means right. you know so i i agree with you i think there's lots of things you can take from different situations yeah. And the worst answer to like, why do I have to learn this is because it's on the test like that. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. And I've been guilty of saying that early on in my career. Right. Yeah, like, cause, yeah. because a lot of times, you know, in schools we're like, I don't know why they have to learn this. Yeah. It's in the curriculum and I have to teach this. So, yeah. so I just have to learn it. Right. Put on your seatbelt. Here we go. <laughs> right. 
Um, so you, you and I talked about this uh, idea of customized learning. And so yeah. what is that? Like when you, when you share that terminology, cause it, it is new to me. Mm -hmm. uh, now I can kind of make sense of it just from the two words that I know, mm -hmm. uh, doing a little scientific method, right? Uh, just kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't even know what that is, but, anyways, but what, what does that mean to you when you say customized learning? Um, mm -hmm. what, what does that look like? Okay, so um, customized learning to me would be um, using different techniques or strategies to um, create that environment in your classroom where you have kids um, doing what they need to do then in order to gain the, the most from your curriculum. Um, yeah. And ha hand in hand, you have the other word, I'm just going to bring it up now if that's all right with you, called personalized learning. Right. Um, personalized learning then kind of drills down specifically to that kid um, and how that kid learns. Um, you know, so in in my classroom, I have I teach seventh and eighth grade. I have kids all the way from like a third grade reading level to like first, second year college. So like that's a big gap and that's a big gap to try to even figure out if you were to, supposed to stand up and direct teach everybody. You're going to lose kids now. Mm -hmm. Am I saying direct teaching has no place in the classroom? No, I, I completely think right. that you, in order to be an effective teacher, you have to have different tools and different strategies and direct teaching is one of those things. I do it to this day, um, it has its place. But I right. do think kids learn much better when they are presented with either material or subject matter that is at them where they are at. If it's too high, they ain't getting it. If it's too low, they're going to be like, this is easy. I'm going to breathe right, right through, right? right? So if you can meet them as closely to where they are at, that's where you're going to get the greatest gain. Um, and then that's also, I think, you're going to get to challenge them a little bit. And then they are going to feel that sense of accomplishment to want to keep performing for you mm -hmm. and keep learning in the long run. Well, that's actually, um, uh, there's no way it's like my high, my highly set. I can, it's like flow theory, you okay, know, flow, flow, yeah, flow I can, theory. I can, I can say the word flow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, <laughs> I get that part. So the, the flow theory is basically, there's a tie into it with what you just kind of talked about with video yeah. games, right? Yeah. So if you make a video game too easy, people Correct. get bored. If you make it too hard, they actually won't play it because mm -hmm. it's like, well, I can't solve it. And that, that is, there is a, a lot of time between really powerful learning uh, and, and actually, um, you know, it, and that notion of flow, like kind mm -hmm. of being in that space. And it, it, I find that when I'm in flow, you, you lose track of time. Mm -hmm. that you are like immersed in whatever you're doing. And mm -hmm. uh, there, there is a power to that. Now, I, I find it really interesting because when we talk about education, there's a lot of times that we talk about like there's an art and a science to it, right? Yeah. And it, it's interesting because you're a science teacher, but also as someone who's very into music, you're mm -hmm. obviously into arts. So yeah. when you talk about um, your own teaching in mm -hmm. science classroom, not not necessarily like how do you how do you see that? How do you see the arts actually as part of what you do? No, oh, that's that's a good question. Um, well, I only ask good questions on the innovators mindset podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. That's all. That's all. No, I, that's, that's good. Yeah, no bad questions here. That's good. Well, you know, the the easiest, and this might not be an answer to your question, but the easiest way I think of it is like when I, like you said, when I get into a groove, mm -hmm. all else stops. And I feel like I'm getting somewhere. I feel like I'm accomplishing things. And I'm talking whether that's fixing something around the house, whether yeah. that's playing my drums in a band, whether that's, you know, even teaching, right? So, I mean, that's, a, that's the feeling that I think you want to try and have with your kids. And somewhere along the line, I, I'm not sure why or I'm not sure where, yeah. kids lose excitement kids lose that um sense of just wanting to learn um and you know i'm seeing it a little bit with my daughter and my she's like going fourth and fifth grade i mean she yeah. loves to learn she still she still pretends to be a teacher with her friends and stuff right but like at some point in the in the process something's lost and i you don't want to say it's innocence because it's not innocence Right. But do you know what I'm saying with that? And I, I think oh. I think what happens then is um, whether whether kids are forced to grow up or or whatnot, um, they lose that sense of just I'll use the word flow. 
And the more you can get them into activities where like they are problem solving, they're using, you know, their hands in like labs or things like that. I think, um, you know, you'll, you'll get results and you'll see that. But I mean, that's kind of from a science point of view because we do do a lot of labs um, and things like that. Well, the, so like the, when, I, and I think that there's a reason I asked you this question yeah. is because I, I, I grapple with this too, right? Like, yeah. is like, cause you always hear about like the art and science. And mm-hmm. when, when you're talking about this and kind of your explanation for me, the uh, science is like, is the information, right? Is mm-hmm. like the, the pedagogy the behind it, pedagogy, yeah. whatever, however yeah. people yeah. say that art is meant to evoke emotion, right? Mm-hmm. Like when I see a piece of art, when I hear music, right? Like yeah. I, I, there's songs to this day. If you play them, I'll start crying. Like, and I'll be like, why am I crying to this song? Right. Yeah. Right. And there is, yeah. there is that. And I think that is when we forget about that emotional connection to mm-hmm. learning, a lot is lost um, mm-hmm. in, in our classroom. And, you know, you kind of said yeah. that, about how you kind of become, you know, it's because it's just about the stuff. And, you know, as, you know, as students get older, um, they become often more disconnected from school. And it's mm-hmm. a lot of times because as we were talking about earlier, it's mm-hmm. such heavy content mm-hmm. that we forget about that art. We forget mm-hmm. about that emotion that is so valuable to what we mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, on the same breath, like, I mean, taking different college courses even now, like that stuff tends to even, I mean, I know it's work, but like that stuff tends to re- reinvigorate me as a person mm-hmm. because not only am I learning new techniques and new strategies, but getting it, getting the chance to apply that mm-hmm. gives me that feeling again, like, oh, this, this is something new. This is awesome. I'm trying something new. It's, you know, whether it's a success or a failure, it's something new. It's something fresh. You know what I mean? Right. And just having that, um, you know, I agree with you there. Having that, uh, change to kind of keep things new yeah Help, yeah you know? yeah there's, there's like totally an invigoration uh mm-hmm. in that process so yeah. last question i'm going to ask yeah. you uh, this is you know uh being recorded in november of 2022 but it is being posted in january of 2023 so new year uh, a lot of people have uh resolutions things they want to try i'm big on habits right so yeah. I'm not big on i'm not a big resolution guy yeah um but i am a big habit guy and i feel that you develop habits you're not really worried about the new year you're just kind of keeping you know like maybe tweaking some stuff mm-hmm. so a- as people look into this new year like what what are your maybe your, what are your hopes for the year as, as you go into it ah uh, deep deep questions <laughs> <laughs> well I will tell you a couple things, you know, on a personal note, um, well, I found that we found out that my wife's pregnant with our third oh, child. Oh, I know, I know. So, now so I guys, have, this is an Innovators Mindset podcast. This, this is, yeah, now we're on family issues. So no, um, so we, uh, we will have a 12 year old, um, a 10 year old at the time when yeah. the baby's born and a newborn. So oh, wow. was, yeah, I know surprise baby, but we're super excited, super excited. Um, so I would say, you know, as, as the new year starts, like I, I am also a habit kind of person. I, um, stick, stick very close to my workout routines. I stick very close to my, you know, my daily and weekly, um, let's call them rituals. Um, mm-hmm. but like, I, I think moving forward, I want to try to continue to, um, deal with change better. Um, to be honest with you, because, you know, we're going to have a a new baby coming into the mix. Um, I will be most likely forced to change some of those routines and rituals. Um, but I think I say that for two reasons. Number one, just to keep my own sanity, I I need to be embrace, embrace some change. Um, and you know, change is good. Um, not all change is bad. And then the second thing is more for, you know, the, the other people in my life to see whether it's my students or more importantly, my own children, like this is how this guy can deal with change. Mm-hmm. Um, this is how this guy is functioning with change. He's still able to like be a great dad, a great teacher, you know, you name it. But, um, even with this, this new thing, he's, he's good to go. Um, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I also think it's, it's continually, it's always important, you know, whether you're, 
you're in something or not to continue to learn um, because the more you can learn, the more, you know, knowledge is power. I know it's cliche, cliche, but it is. And I think the more you can learn, whether it's about yourself or about what you, what you love, um, you can only get better, you know? So yeah, you, you talked earlier about um, that, those life lessons that you want to teach, you know, your own students and, mm -hmm. And those things, and I, I'm a big advocate that the best way to deal with change is to initiate it, right? Mm -hmm. To like do that, that, that is, uh, so it, it, that, the, the best way we teach is through our example. And so Brian, it, it was awesome to uh, meet you, to connect with you. I, I hope uh, your wife's doing well. Yeah, uh, I know she was sick last week. And so um, your, your, your students in your school community seem really blessed. And so Thank um, you. thanks for being on the podcast, everyone listening or watching, uh, check out uh, you can find Brian's uh, contact information down below, but you can also see, yeah. you can see his rap video on there DNA, you right? And we'll see, you know, how that sticks out. I'm going to watch it after and it'll see if I'm just wrapping DNA stuff from now on, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Have a wonderful day. See ya.